I'm right, yo. Okay, so I'm finally getting back at this. It's been like a super long time, but um, I got everything set up once more. Hopefully, we want to see what's up. Uh, webcam quality sucks. Hopefully, I got the sync going on a little better, but I'm really not sure. Um, and uh, yeah, I gotta get this all like sorted out. I think it's muted already, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, it's muted. Okay, cool. Um, but um. But yeah, so I'm trying to get back on live. I got to finish a bunch of mixings for this new project and I'm trying to do a bunch more stuff. And I've been having so many issues with um, producers on BeatStars and their contracts because I'm working, uh, I worked on two different projects that are really, really cool. And uh, both artists came in with beats that they found on BeatStars, more or less, right? And so me as a producer, I want everyone to get their split, everyone to get their share. I want everything to be legit because I have to and it's just how it is. And um, I'm going through the contracts that they got from BeatStars and I used to sell beats on BeatStars and I remember the contracts and I customized them and changed them a little bit because um, there's some things you need to add in there and that it doesn't do it automatically. You need to put in like your email address, your BMI information so that the few artists that do want to do it legit and that are trying to give you like the money and what you need, they need that information and a lot of guys don't answer their DMs. I'm like hitting him up on BeatStars already. They're not answering. So I hunt them down on Instagram, find them, not answering. Contact them on their website usually when they have one, which is the same thing as BeatStars. Um, if I log down their email, if I find their email or it's in the contract somewhere, then I send it to him and then you don't answer, you don't answer. That's, I mean, that's up to you. What do you want me to do? And then they're complaining that, you know, artists are not paying the producers and this and that and then there's the whole content id going on so if someone uploads it on youtube then it gets shut down right away and you're just like there's nothing it sucks it sucks so i'm trying to make it legit I'm trying to make it work um and it hasn't been going on well so right now we're in hawaii it's raining and um and yeah i want to get back on twitch and i'm gonna get back on live and i want to do more of this because uh, we just started a label like in 2020 with, with some of my good friends. And so we're running into these types of contract issues because things are starting to roll and things are going better and better. And so we want TV and sync licensing. We want everything to be straight, everything to be legit. And we really want a fairness for everyone involved in the creative process. And um, sometimes it's not easy. So that's why I want to go on Twitch and like go through my experiences and what's going on and what I've learned through the thing. So like... Yeah whoever's watching can't do like the same mistakes um but yeah but today it's raining and uh i need to finish this new project that i have with kettle uh which if you guys didn't hear the first project that we did omens of a rebellion let me see if i have spotify opened up yay um let me small this up I'm trying to get this all set properly so with Kettle Landsguard, amazing artist um, who lives in Canada, but is actually from uh, Norway, and fucking crazy. Um, he has this, like, it's a mix of, like, Chris Cornell, David Bowie, um, alternative rock, which is fire. We made so many songs together and a bunch of singles, and we finally, like, out of 20 songs that he sent me, picked out, like, the six best ones and turned it into an EP that kind of all fit the vibe and fit the cohesiveness of it. So, um, this was the first one. This is one of my favorite tracks. No, this is my favorite track, actually, Earthworm. It's Super Diddy Rock. <laughs> my friends rise. It was so good. The hook was so good, too. So yeah, so now I'm basically working on the second album because I got another bunch. I got another stack of like a shit ton of beats that I, that I sent him and then he came back. So he sent me a bunch of songs. So oh, this is the hook. That was fire. Super dope. Um, and so he sent me another. These are all the ones, all these folders with like, oh, good. I got... These are the ones, I already organized it, but he sent me like 10, 10 beats, like 10 songs. And so I kind of filtered through them and looked at them and made Omens 2 and Omens 3 is ready to go. So these are the ones I picked for like Omens 2 and the ones with the dash are the ones I have to finish like mixing. And still in there, we're going to filter out a few more to make sure that the project is as cohesive as it can be 
and that there's not one song on there that you want to hit skip, which is the goal. And those are the type of projects to like pitch the TV, pitch the film, pitch the bigger record labels and things like that, because that's what they want. You don't, and that's why people listen to EPs and and uh, albums. Is that back in the day you buy an album and then expecting two or three songs to be good on it, and a great record has like maybe two or three songs that you skip, but uh, super rare. And um, you're forced to listen to them because you bought the album. Now that everything's on streaming. I think the singles are kind of dead. Um, but you, you do have to release music constantly to keep your monthly streams up. Um, but, you know, as an artist, you just want to do projects. So that's what we're doing right now. And uh, the song that I want to work on is called Banking, Banking On, which is this one. And here's the demo that he sent me. So that's the beat. So I sent him, I make the beat. I sent him like a loop. This was an unfinished beat. So I had like three tracks on it. And then he adds in the vocals, sends me back the demo. I listen to it. And this one was just super fire. He sends back all the, all the fire. He added some guitars on this. Sends me all of his backing vocals and everything, and so yeah, is this this song this song is gonna be epic and definitely gonna be part of the project. So we're mixing it today. So I pulled it up in Ableton. This was the loop that I had, uh, the instrumental loop, and I pulled in all of his all of his tracks. Um, so um, I separated them to the vocal tracks and then the instrumental tracks they sent me. Um, this was the basic like loop at first. Uh, let me group this into like make this better. Um, boom, I'm gonna group this into the Apple R beat folder. Cool, beat, and this is gonna be like the vocals. I'm gonna have one for the vocals afterwards. Um, so this is the beats that he sent. Uh, can I just solo these? Yeah, probably. Um. So that was it, so there was just like a drum, um, a loop. Some hats Rolling over. and then all these that I gotta mute to make sure so first I'm gonna arrange the song see what's up and um, and then uh, and then we're gonna layer in the vocals uh, so how he had it was exactly the same which I think I'm gonna keep it hitting it hard like that from the start because uh, I like the arrangement that he did um, so straight up I'm gonna loop all these boom 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 Boom. So that's the entire song that he did on the instrumental, so I don't need the instrumental anymore. Um, and let's try to chill things out a little bit. So if I take out the drums at first, um, and the bass, I do want to take out the bass. I'm kind of curious. Yeah, okay, I'm going to do that for sure. Um, this is what's weird too. Main Vox, Main Vox 1. So I'm not really sure what he meant by that. So I'm going to turn off this one. I'm going to bring out the Main Vox. Uh, I'm gonna create a group for this that we're gonna call Vocals or Vox Capital, please. Uh, trying to keep my folders organized. The Vox, I always like them to be like another color, like bright yellow, so that I can see it pop out. Same with the beat. I don't like it to be the same. I like it to be like another bright color, like fucking nah, that's an ugly color. Uh, like this green. Uh, nah, it gets me confused. Shit, <laughs> that was getting complicated. Um. Damn, where's our? All right, this one. Fuck it. Um, Vox. And, um, all right, so first up, let's zoom in here. Alt. I'm going to cut this one up. We don't need this. Uh, lower the vocals right away. Okay, cool. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna work on this section here. So now we're gonna be just tweaking the vocals and adding the things. So I already have a preset for Kettle because we've worked on so many songs together already. Um, one thing that I need to make sure of is uh, the beat actually, what key it's in, mixed in key first. Um, I don't need to do it now, but yeah. VST version. Right there on the beat, so I know what key it is, and um, 
we're gonna I'm gonna break it down. So Apple F uh, Kettle Dance Guard vocal track. I like the one on Earthworm, which was the song that I just made you guys listen before. Uh, that's the vocal that I like the most of him. Um, I could create already a template with his shit, but mm, never mind. So these are all the VSTs that I got. Not too many VSTs to be honest. This one by all this by. All right, so this is the entire vocal track. Uh, let me turn off all the effects. Boom, boom. All right, cool. So first off, I start with um, a gate if I need to. This one doesn't seem like I really need a gate. Because his breaths are super smooth. And they're not bothering in the mix. So cool. No need for a gate. EQ, I always cut off the lows. Because all this you don't need. Which he already does a good job before. Then I go in with the compressor, which... His voice already comes in pretty compressed. Alright, like that. I try not to make it go over like 5 dB. Glitch! Yo, what's up? Bro, how's it going? Man, you gotta send me some beats. I'm waiting for some beats from you, dude. So much. That lo fi thing. We're gonna get, we're gonna release. So, Glitch Beats is an um, amazing dope producer here in Hawaii. Legit fucking fire. Part of the Ableton gang. And he does some crazy shit with synths. And, um,. Supposed to be the new producer on the on the on on the label, bro. And after all this shit that we're happening with like beat star beats and producers not answering back and not getting their splits and not getting their percentages and all that, I want to get even more into like we need to get our own producers on board because it's so much easier to just get dope talent going on it. So give me give me that shit and let's get it going. Justin's record's coming out soon. Um on the 19th and then we can roll out some other stuff if it's ready I've been waiting bro I've been waiting I'm trying the new I'm trying Twitch again um so yeah I gotta finish this one um yep and actually I'm gonna listen to it in the mix so I prefer then a channel EQ just to boost up the highs a little bit This one's super nice. Um, then it's the auto tune, which his vocal pretty much doesn't need anything, which is why uh, I dropped in mixed in key on the beat uh, to figure out. Seems like it's C minor. Yeah. Okay. So go back to his main vocal. Go back to auto tune. C natural minor. He's always around this section. So if I crank the auto tune, he gets super shaky. And I don't like it. So no transition. A little faster. Right there's good. Right there's cool. Um, next, um, usually I would put like a de-esser. But his S's aren't aren't too bad, and actually, I kind of want to like make it a little bit brighter. I might lower it a little bit. Um, but yeah, he doesn't need a DSer because he's already DSing uh, pre, and his vocals that come in are super clean. Uh, I need to let him know that it gets like it's a little borderline saturating. Uh, I already had some tracks of his that were saturating, which is a bummer. Uh, so I gotta let him know about that. And um, so after that, I have this audio effects rack uh, that I like to um, set. So I'm going to take all these off. Um, how it starts off is I have one chain where... Interesting. Okay. So this is the drive channel. That's why it's important to write it down. So this channel, there's absolutely nothing going through it. Nothing happening. It's just the raw vocal. There's no effects here. 
And then I have another EQ to kind of get rid of the lows that I'm having with all the other effects, which we're going to check out later. Um, then I have a reverb. So these are kind of like send and receive channels, um, but I do it in an audio effect rack to make it easier. Um, and then I can just copy this over, and each vocal is kind of different, but it allows me to affect the reverb even more if I want to because it's 100% wet on these channels. So the reverb, this is the pure affected uh, signal. Uh, so I turn it on, and then I can, this is my dry wet knob, more or less, so I can put him in when I need to. So I want quite a bit of reverb on this one. Then I have a saturator, which is actually um, this UAD plugin RAW that I use. Oh, it's just fire. It gives a lot of crunch to the sound, to the vocal. And then again, an EQ and sometimes a gate if it picks up some extra like noise. On this one, I might do the same thing. I might have a gate on it. Um, and then filter out the thing. So let's turn it off, crank it in. So here we can really hear it. Solo it. So that's the track. Actually, I'm gonna need to crank up the volume on this. There we go. So I just want it in the background a little bit. Then I have a delay system, which is super cool because I have this affected, I have this delay track where um, um, I don't want the delays to be happening all the time. So I also added a comp sidechain compressor on the side that's sidechained by, uh, so what's triggering the compressor is actually the lead vocal. So whenever he sings, it turns down the delay and then whenever he stops singing, the delay comes back up. So it fills in like those pockets. That's a cool trick I learned on YouTube. I think Reed Stefan, or something like that. And so I have that there, uh, which is pretty dope. Uh, the side chain, so I gotta modify it to, actually this is gonna be, I'm gonna call this the lead. Actually, Vox underscore lead. Cause I gotta rename these right so that when I export it, I don't have to rename it. Um, Vox underscore lead, that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna bring in the delay from Vox lead, right? So I got the delays coming through here. So it's getting ducked every time this hits, which is cool. And I'm gonna crank this. I'm gonna shorten it a little bit. That's actually pretty fire, and I'm gonna do a second one, which is actually gonna be the four. And I wanna invert the phases. Yeah. Right, what I wanna do on this one? I wanna flip it, but I'm gonna make it pink on this one. Now I'm gonna do only the one. I like the two. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And then the last one that I have is a glue compressor. It's going like crazy uh, to have like a parallel compression going on, just so I have like a really intense, super compressed vocal slightly in the background. This was going. The compressor is going crazy.
So I add it in until I hear too much, and then I bring it back down a little bit. Um, that's pretty cool. So the rest. All this I'm going to Also, what I'll put on the general on the general uh, Vox group is a sidechain compressor, uh, which I already have a bunch here um, with the kick. Right, so the kick is triggering the compressor, so that whenever the kick hits, the vocals, all the vocals will drop, and it will make it a nice little. It will make everything feel a little more blended, right? But you don't want it too much. And this one actually, you know, I'm looking at it. I copied the wrong one. This one made no sense. All right, this one's going on. That's the main guitar. I might actually double this one. Bass has one too. Just to get that room. Right? All right, cool. So, that lead vocal sounded amazing. All right. Not sure about this. This one I'm mixing it in actually really badly because I'm mixing in with the master on, which I shouldn't. So I'm gonna take that off. Take this back up. He also has some other guitars coming through afterwards, so. And he has some backing vocals that are crazy, so I'm gonna take these um, off too. These two. Oh shit, my shift sometimes doesn't work. Uh, piece out uh, and now we're gonna bring in these two uh, right here and actually to be sure since see he sent me the um, stereo signal for those vocals so they're pretty much the same thing the left and right channel are right there left and right so it's the same audio track but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pan this one all the way over there and then I'm gonna mono it so that I only have the left channel and then I only have the right channel uh, so it's kind of like a little workaround um, which isn't too crazy. I have everything here to do it too. So what I'm gonna do is the pan, I'm gonna pan it all the way left, and then I'm gonna duplicate it, pan in the middle, and hit mono. And so now, on this track, I only have that left side. And so now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other track. So copy these over, over here. So I have only the right side. I might not need to do this, but I feel I have like more control over the blend of the two sides rather than just using like the stereo channel that's already there. Um, so same thing, take this off. Um, on you. So now if I group these two and I'm gonna put this also as like a little lighter yellow and call this um, Vox underscore BKG and I'm gonna copy all this because I don't wanna repeat. Um, did I copy hopefully Apple R, Apple V? Nope, it didn't, so Vox, because <laughs> I hold the shift down. Vox, BKG, and this one is the left channel, so left. And this one is going to be the right channel. I did the same thing. Apple R, Apple C, Apple R, Apple V. And this is going to be the right channel. So I'm going to send this one to the left and send this one to the right. Like that, the back. So it might seem weird, but it's actually pretty cool. So now if we listen to this, the banking on you. you have the real thing. So this, I don't need. I'm going to cut that out. So this is where now on each and every one of these, actually I'm gonna put a general one here. So I'm gonna, first of all, put in a gate. Uh, Cause these are backing vocals, so I don't want too much of the background stuff going on. on I'm gonna put in the mix. So this one's a more like harmony kind of thing. Okay, so I got these going on. Now I'm gonna add in a glue compressor. So 
I know this one needs to be a little bit lower. Because I'm looking at the bars. I should have my headphones for this kind of stereo stuff. So that one I can, and now I'm going to drop this. Alright, cool. Then an EQ, because I don't want none of that low stuff. Um, EQ8. I just got like the Slate plugins thing, and uh, it's not working for me. <laughs> right there. Same thing, boost the highs a little bit. And now we're going to add in reverb for sure. Put it as high, take off the course of the spin because I don't like how it sounds. Alright. So the idea of this one, I'm not putting it in parallel because um, I want it to feel more in the background. Uh, I want it to be like, I don't want it to be as clear as like the lead vocal. Lead vocal, I still want that clear presence of like the non-affected signal and have the effects come in a little bit more in the background. We still have that lead one in the middle. Uh, this one, I want everything to feel kind of like in the background. So that's why I don't, I use the dry wet knob and I don't use parallel um, effects on the background stuff. So that's cool. And then and now I can do like the delay. So I have an EP vocal delay preset uh, that I saved. EP vocal echo. I don't think that was the word, but maybe. So I bring that in. So this is already an audio audio effects rack with uh, two chains. So one is the dry, which is good that I should save it as. So dry, which I like it on top. And this one is the um, delay, right? Uh, so it's actually what quarter notes eight notes but anyway um and again so that same delay trick that i mentioned before with that sidechain compressor right there uh no input but this time it's going to come from the vox background uh now let's hear it so this one is actually a longer delay uh, let me shorten it up feedback a lot more so actually I'm going to put it longer and actually I'm also going to make it even fucking worse I'm going to saturate that version of it and I'm gonna put the reverb. I'm gonna saturate it. I'm gonna saturate it. Uh, so I can't use another raw uh, distortion because it's a UAD plugin. I only have two cores. I can only use two UAD effects on it. So um, I don't wanna do the slate digital either because if I save this rack as like background vocals, which I should do, which I am going to do actually. That's a great idea. So I'm gonna use, um, what do I have as a saturator? Um, well, I have, of course, I have the saturator. That's stupid. Um, I have overdrive, which I usually like to use. Um, drive and color. Uh, I have the amp cabinet. I have a bunch of cool stuff. Vinyl distortion, saturator, erosion. Um, or just add a little more harmonics. Not really what we need to. Cabinet might be cool. Um, I'm going to do an amp, and I'm going to do, like, key crunch. Let's see. Um, that one I'm going to add it as a chain as well. Uh, so I just have uh, that going on. Then an EQ. Uh, where is it? EQ8. Right here. That I'm going to cut out the lows. And make it a little more radio-y thing, right? So pretty much around here. Let's see. That's fire, right? So I need a little more distortion to it. That's cool. Because I'm getting all the... 
It's a distorted reverb signal, actually, which is kind of crazy. That delay is already too strong. Maybe a little harsh. Alright, cool. That's good. Okay, so there are the other guitars. <laughs> um, so we're going to start off with these two, which are the rhythm guitars. This one I'm going to mute. I'm going to drag it down because it's just an audio, like an effect. And this one we're gonna do kind of like the same. I might not even do the same thing because I have, he gave me the same thing. Like so, I have the left right signal and the left right signal going, which is the same shit. So I'm gonna take this one off, mute this. I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna use only this one. Yep. Actually, I'm just gonna delete it and go for it. Yeah. guitars so you can hear there's this one frequency that's kind of fucking me up um, so I'm gonna do a bell and I'm just gonna try to find it cue this out solo Things that one. Keep fucking up, I keep hearing them. There you go, it's better. So I might cut this part off. So that's here in the mix. I gotta do the same thing, so it's a little bit off, but um, I'm, gonna do I'm gonna do just one fucking thing. Might not do it as hard though. And I have this new like tape. Um, this is what I'm gonna do. So vintage tape channel. Yeah, I think that's it. What? Oh no, that's the. It wasn't this one anyways, it was like the Slade, uh, Slade Tape, yeah, Slade Tape Machine, there's your VSTs, I don't use the audio to use that much. those guitars in um, I do need to get this one in to get that build uh, we're pretty much I don't know if we're gonna do the same thing but I think he's probably gonna have the same settings on these so I need to I'm not gonna do the virtual tape on this one I'm just gonna do this and a lot more reverb on this one So this 
one, I'm gonna have it auto pan for sure. Just to get that stereo kind of like going on. And cut out more of the lows, add in a reverb, stock reverb right there. Um, remove this one. Uh, so I'm going to remove the reverb on this one. Actually, this one is where, that's a great example, for example. So I'm going to put this, and I'm going to group this one, and this is where, this is a great example for a parallel um, compression. So this one is the reverb, right? Um, boom, which is 100% wet, and then we're just going to add it in the background. Same thing with this uh, sidechain compression. It's gonna be pumping throughout this guy. It can be before, or after, or whatever. Um, well, there's one more thing I wanted to do. I think it's I want to smash it. Um, so I have this plugin called Sausage Fattener, and I just want to smash, smash this. This, I need to hit way harder. So in order to do that is remove the bass, uh, remove everything actually. So here I have like a little bit of stuff that I need to remove. That's better already arrangement wise. It feels a little, feels a little nicer. Um, Uh, I got some extra vocals here, which I'm curious. And this one I might hit it twice. I'm gonna do like boom boom. So actually, I think I can remove more lows here. Now in mono, is where it doesn't feel right. In my opinion. Everything feels super muddy. Um, I have this crazy buzz. saw the other day on like mixing drums better um fuck i don't remember but it feels a little muddy uh, so i might need to go in with the, the headphones can't hear too much of what's going on in the background now All this stuff I gotta cut out. Um, that's where I, I can kind of use a gate, but I'm losing his breaths, so I don't want to. 
Ah, I think it's because it's not hitting the one properly, bro. I think that's what's bugging me. Um, yeah, that's exactly what's bugging me. So I'm keeping this one here, and this one I'm dragging it out. Just a tap. I think it's this one now that I have to cut in that case or pitch it up. Ooh, good idea, Eric. Uh, so that's where like part of the arrangement, shit, minus four, minus four plus 12 people. Um, eight, eight would be an octave. Curious. All these delays that are fucking me up a little bit. Um, so, but I can't really automate the delays on this. Maybe I could. Uh, let's see. If I hit, oh shit, no, there isn't. There isn't. Not on this one. Okay. Um, in that case, I might have to like duplicate the track. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. So we're gonna duplicate the track. I am going to erase this and this and this. And um, this one is going to be with no delays and an octave up, right? So this one goes off. This one also has like a lot of mid-range. So I'm curious, and we'll just see. I need to add a sweep, that's for sure. So a crash, usually like a crash reverse is what I kind of like to do. Um, or some, or flourish. Flourishes are always good. Um, right there, pretty much. I gotta zoom. Oh, fucker. I gotta zoom in, and I gotta zoom in this way. Um, hit this here. It's not bad. Move it a little bit. Still feels like there's way too much going on, right?
this is where I can like on the master channel slap on an RC20 and have it like kind of affected in a different way make it feel like more of a, a cassette kind of thing I don't know why they didn't pop in don't die RC20 is my computer losing it alright so what I'm gonna do <laughs> is gonna save this file save life set as uh, it's in the banking project banking project and this one's gonna be banking underscore vocals v1 it's taking way longer than I thought this one because there's a lot of arrangement alright so we got RC20 in. Um, I want it really. This one's nice. So I'm gonna keep this one, but the noise, I'm gonna break it way down. And the gain, I'm gonna drop it way down. I think that's cool work. Wobble a little more. And this one, I just want to turn it on in this phase right here, and then bring it back. Right? That makes sense. And shit. Keep forgetting. It's not that way of doing it. Boom, boom. All right, cool. Where then I can go in, I can go here, and I can do show automation on the on this guy, where I can kind of like drop it. Uh, oh shit! Hold Alt and make this to make it like curvy, and then we're gonna bring it back up right after. But be sure. See how that blend fills in. So I'm feeling this like I think it's the magnetic that's fucking me up. Also gonna take off these background vocals in this section right here. I'm not sure about this kind of arrangement though. This is weird, it's kind of off. where I need something else to come in. Um. Oh, then we have the solo. Yes. Um. Why, motherfucker? Uh, so this is where it could come really cool is um, uh, guitar rig. Shit, I don't know. 
Uh, then we're gonna have to switch beats because I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired of this one. Um, BSTs. Shit, where's my guitar rig? Guitar rig five. And plugins. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so this one is where I'm gonna be able to smash it afterwards. And I only want the effects. Remix. So, for example, Dirty Solo, I'm gonna take off the amp, take off the distortion. I'm gonna add in and I'm actually just gonna uh, should I duplicate this guy I shouldn't duplicate this guy I should duplicate these guys so duplicate um, I am going to W I'm gonna erase all of these two back here these two back here as well and I'm gonna add in these guys boom boom right there which should be the same thing but this time I'm gonna put this at like 25 and this one at like 25 as well, kind of the same thing. Um, I want to see if there is a difference between these two. Hell yeah. So let's see it. Hopefully it won't affect the blue compressor too much. Delays are way too crazy. Oh, maybe the feedback's too much. All right, I don't know, but. Okay, that's not too bad for the first mix. Um, not too bad at all. So these two tracks, we noticed we didn't have anything here. And this is another like lead track, so peace. 
um, W A, so you can hide the bottom. And let's see, yeah, so that would be the main thing. So let me do a fake. I'm gonna be adding more drums and things like that because I feel like it's still missing a lot. Um, but first, let's get this. So Vox, I'm gonna send a little bit of the drums into my reverb synth channel. Just a little bit. I'm gonna send a little bit of the, oh, damn. Okay, I got the second guitar rolling too. Uh, so I'm sending a little bit of the guitars. Which is the main kind of phrase of the beat, right? Um, and this guy. A little bit, and the general, and the lead vox. So that feels like the vibe. You can't really hear much, but... This is pure reverb. Might be a little too loud, but we'll see. Kind of helps it blend it all together. And to finish off, uh, just a quick schmaster, as Mad Zach would say. Um, and I'll do this loud in the pop. I think would be what's it? Uh, this is just to get a demo out, so I can send it to him. I'm getting all these lip smacks though. Turn on the gate. I'm getting all these little peaks and these little spikes coming through. I think, uh, so I'm gonna save this. One more listen for like the arrangement. I don't know how mixed that was. I was probably on for like an hour. So this is where I'm going. All right, I already know. <laughs> I already know I want the RC20 on uh, until the drums come in. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna turn this on. Then we're gonna go to magnitude, and then the drums come off right here on this line, I think. Uh, and we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna hit one right there, drop this. No shit, drop this one. And then I'm gonna kind of curve it like that. Fuck, not letting me curve, bruh. Alt, I think there's a problem with my button. So these are the typical songs where you're going to have to automate the volume as well uh, with the master because you want things to hit harder, you need to like get the master. Sometimes the trick is just the volume. So we're going to snap on a utility real quick. I want the hook to hit hard. So this one... When it comes in right here, I definitely want it full power, right? Full volume uh, there. The rest, I'm actually going to drop on like 2 dBs. And when you hold shift, usually it's a little more smooth. There we go. So I'm going to drop it down like 270. And then if I zoom in, I shouldn't need to like have like a nice little... Oh, putain, merde, bâtard. This is pissing me off, seriously. Come on. What's up? Ridiculous. It didn't even work that much. Putain, gas. Gas the cool. Just a small little like tweak. 
during this transition part. I still think the drum is not hitting hard enough, but anyway. And then we're gonna have to keep doing this until the end of the chorus. We can have the volume drop. Minus two again here. All right, but have this done like gradually. And then the next hit is here. So we're gonna do the same thing. During this phase, it's gonna go back up to zero. And it's gonna head that way all the way to the end of the track. Go up, putain, ça rase. Ça de ouf. Okay, so that should hit already a little harder. But that was for the headphone phase, kind of. Zed. So that kick already. It's that kick that's messing up everything. But anyways, all right. So this is a good, a good start. Um, and I'm going to export him uh, as a demo version. Export uh, banking. But what was the real name of it? Shit, I forgot. Uh, so this is gonna be an altered state artists. Um. Kettle Lands Guard. Come on, bro. Music. EP. Omens 2. Banking on. And I'm going to create a new folder called Bounce. And this one is going to be. Oh, what is it? What is it really called? Shit. Rolling. On you, rolling over. Okay, cool. Banking on you, rolling over, I guess. All right. Banking on you, rolling over. I think it's cool to not have any caps on these. Banking on you rolling over. Uh, 100 BPM underscore demo. That's pretty much it. Um, and it's gonna go in the bounce folder and save. All right, and that's like the first mix. I don't know how the quality was. We'll see how that goes um, later on. Uh, but, um, but yeah, that's one mix. It's not like crazy mix. Now I have to like kind of rest my ears, listen to it on the headphones, uh, go into like more detail. I already know the kick kind of sucks. Mm, probably mix another song. Uh, but this is what I wanted to do before we go, which is a really good thing. And then I can start chopping up this video. Um, it's showing you how to save your presets in Ableton Live and how to keep your, your effect racks and all that kind of stuff so that you can just copy and paste next time if you're using it, if the same vocalist is coming through. Mm. There's like a special way that you like to do your background vocals, then at least you keep all those effects into one thing. It makes it easy. So that's what we're gonna do with the background vocals, which is one that I haven't saved. Um, but yeah, exports sometimes take a while. Uh, okay, cool. Nothing crazy going on here. Uh, oh, yeah. Just started my job at Ableton as tech support, which is fire. Um, so, actually, I don't think I'm allowed to do these Twitch things anymore because uh, I know I'm not allowed to do the YouTube tutorials. Um, anything related to, like, uh, promoting a musical software or a musical instrument, uh, I can't do it and anything related to that's including Ableton. Um, so any like sponsored videos that I had, I remember I discussed with them saying like, yo, so I can't get any more sponsored videos? That sucks. Um, but yeah, that is the case though. But 
I was doing all this Ableton stuff. Uh, actually, no. Uh, I was kind of justifying myself as I was doing all this to be able to catch Ableton's attention. And now that I'm working for them, you know, I don't really need to do it. But it's fun for me to like explain to you guys how to do it. Um, I like explaining the process because I'm super passionate about it. And so if explaining the process doesn't go, maybe I can still do it without making money. That's what I think. But I don't know. Uh, so I have to figure that out. Anyway. Export is done, and what we wanted to do as a last thing, so we have the background vocals here, is this whole thing that I want to keep as like an audio effect rack. So I'm going to select all of them, so hold shift, select the whole thing, we're going to group them. Um, I have the delay, I have the dry, and this one was what? Distortion. So I'm going to put that there and call it saturation. Um, this one, then we're going to open the knobs, the macro knobs. We're going to hide all of the effects that are going through, and we're going to rename this um, ED chip. EDP BKG BKG vocal kettle dance guard background vocals I'm gonna put an S so I know it's a group boom and hit enter and there we have it and then uh, when I go here into my finder I can't really see with my camera on can you uh, let me see if I can hide it. If I hide the webcam. All right, cool, perfect. I don't know if this is going on live. Let me check. Uh, turn this off. It's good to know. Ooh, did I lose it? Yeah, okay, cool. Went off. All right, perfect. So bring it back. And what I do, so here are all my, like, uh, my folders where I have all my samples at and everything. And Eric Dubois Prod. I have this folder. Oh, I gotta reorganize all this. Effect racks. So here are all the effect racks that I have saved, and here are all the vocal effects racks that I have saved. And I'm starting to organize them by artist. Uh, so I'm gonna do that again. So new folder. I'm gonna call this kettle. And I'm gonna just drag and drop this guy into the kettle folder. Boom, right there. Hit enter. It's gonna save everything here. So whenever you create, like for example, I wanna do two more tracks, I group them. Right, oh, hold shift, bruh. Uh, group them, and then I just drag this on top. Boom, and there it is. And so I have the whole effects rack ready to go here with the settings and everything. So I can now just go in and tweak, change a little few parameters. I could macro all these so I can have it quick. I know the parameters that I want to change, and I might do it in the future. Um, but I prefer to have a visual on everything. So yeah, so that's it. Boom, take this off, delete these guys. We already saved this. WH. Um, I don't need this master to be super fucking high. I don't need this one either. Save. And we're going to hit file, collect on save. Oh shit, that's not what I wanted to do. Cancel. Mouse is running out of battery. Collect on save. Perfect. Turn this webcam back on. And yeah, beam. That's it. So, all this is saved, all this is done. I'm going to try to be coming back on. I don't know. I don't have like a regular schedule yet. Um, I might get something more in the future because now I'm working at Ableton and I'm still doing the part-time job at the gas station so like oh, I'm all over the place but um I want to be able to do this more so yeah that's pretty much it much love peace out get some cool records coming out soon and um we'll see how this goes so